needs today is loving, loving What the world needs to say is I accept my brother What the world needs to see is passion, compassion What the world needs to do is love one another What's up everybody? My name is Tori Franco This is the What the World Needs podcast And I have Edwards here 16 year old singer, songwriter Mm-hmm. Producer, mm-hmm. dancer, mm-hmm. mime. Oh. Just, just kidding. Um, and we're gonna just. I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of questions, and whatever you feel comfortable talking about, we'll talk about. All so right, first and book. foremost, you have a song that just came out. Yes. Called Daddy's Little Girl. Daddy's girl. Daddy's girl. Oh, yeah, it's just Daddy's just girl. Just Daddy's girl. Okay. And. How long have you been writing, producing? How long have you been doing this? Because you're young. I am young. Um, I've been writing music since, I'd say, I think it really started taking off eighth grade. Because eighth grade, I was like, it was when like the new trap rap was really just getting into it. And I was just like, yes, I want to be the coolest kid. <laughs> so I started writing. And my first song I put out on SoundCloud was a Panda remix. Oh, my God. Yeah. Designer? Yeah, designer. Oh I did a Panda remix, and I just started writing raps. Um, and actually, uh, my, my homie Tristan J, he got me into rapping um, back when I was way younger. Because he was rapping. He was my age. He was doing his thing, and I was just like, that's so sick. <laughs> and we, he, he, would, we would freestyle every time we hung out, and he was so good, and I was just horrible. And I was like, I gotta get good. So oh, so I would you sit weren't in my room. so you weren't like, um, not good, but I'm saying like you weren't there yet. When you no, started. I sucked. I would literally, <laughs> I I wanted I wanted to write like G Easy. I wanted all my lyrics like G Easy. Like that is my idol. And I was just like, I want my stuff to be like this. So I would just write stuff that was not true at all. I was just saying that I was the <laughs> coolest kid and everything. Um, so I started writing there, and then over time, it kind of just got better and Evolved. better, and then I was making myself freestyle over and over again, until it just got really good. So now it's like, my friends would be like, freestyle, and I'll be like, throw words at me. I'm like, I want every word you can think of. Give me it. I'll make it work. <laughs> and yeah. So you like to play with words, and you like to kind of do it like Eminem does? Like yeah. Like bend the words and stuff bend like that? Bend the words. I saw that before we... Before we started, you were like, oh, yeah. just go I was it. thinking. Now, why, what interested you about music and all of that? Um, I mean, I, I started dancing when I was three. Um, and I grew up in like this whole competition world. And I always just loved music. I, no matter what, it was like always tapping my foot. Like when I'm not doing anything, it's I'm listening to music. Because yeah. music has literally helped me through everything um and it was it was that point where my friend he was rapping and he was showing me it and you know i was i was singing at school talent shows because my mom was like oh I'll sing you know it'll be fun i was like yeah cool um but it kind of went to the next level once my homie started rapping because he, he inspired me i was like that's it. That you get that it. one little spark. That one little spark. He ignited my fire. And, I was and just now like, Let's go. you've been doing it for a couple of years now, right? Yeah. Uh, I've been writing music for four years. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly, as a songwriter, I didn't start. I wrote. I always wrote. Mm-hmm. But I didn't start writing songs until I was 18. So you have, like, I feel like you have a jump start. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people start later in life. Oh, I was big in English class. They'd be like, <laughs> write poems, and I would just be like... <laughs> and okay. So you've always had the passion for writing and... I've always loved art. All types of art. There's yeah. something about movies and the music in the movies that carries the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Well, because dance also is yeah. a visual art. It's visual. And music is the, the audio, yeah. you know? So now it's kind of like I just love it art, together. putting it all together. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's dope. I love that too. Yeah. Now, we were talking before we started recording, mm-hmm. and you were talking about how you used to do alternative music. Yes. And um, now talk about that, like the transition from alternative. All right. So, I uh, started rapping, and 
um, it was end of eighth grade. Um, I was getting hit with the most, like, I was, like, everybody thought I was popular, but I got jumped at a party, and I just felt like the whole world was breaking. My ex, like, that was when, she, like, we ended things. Everything, actually, no. <laughs> no, it was, I was getting bullied. Everything was horrible. I was mad upset, and um, I just started writing mad mad depressing music because it was all it was all I had yeah. like I did not want to talk to anybody about it because I was like nobody's gonna care like my mindset was nobody cares about me and like that was it that's that um, depression yeah I entered that whole depression and it was weird because when I was younger I was like I cannot wait to grow up I cannot wait to just be a teenager and just be an adult and now that I'm a teenager it's like I wish I was back and like <laughs> those younger days where I was just happy and carefree. So I was writing all this sad music. And um, as I said, I got to be an open book. So uh, it was end of eighth grade. I got to the point of being so bad that um, I actually tried to kill myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um, oh, crap. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for my ex now... She was the one who stopped me. Like, she sent me a text right before I did and was like, hey, like... How old were you? Oh, 14. You were 14 years old and you 14. wanted to kill yourself. Yeah. What happened? Were you being bullied? Were you... I was being bullied. Uh, I had people making social media accounts about me. So you were being cyber bullied. Cyber bullied. Bullied in school. And I just didn't want to fight because my mama was just like... Be a, like, you're a lover, not a fighter. Fighting is not going to get you anywhere. It's yeah, just going to yeah. fill you with more rage. Because I already had, my mom was taking me to counseling for anxiety and anger management. Wow. She had no clue that there was depression right under that. And and you know what? It's, it's scary because when you are depressed like that, some people, even people who get depressed, don't realize that they're yeah, depressed. Yeah, not at all. And then it just spirals until you get to until the Until you're at the point where you're just like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what happened was, uh, my ex, she, she hit me up, um, and that was when I was just like, all right, maybe somebody cares about me. Yeah. Then, like, a month later, I started dating. I asked her out. She was two years older. I thought I was awesome. I was like, wow. And we were, we were I think what made us work was we were both broken, mm -hmm. and it was... Being together, that kind of just, like, gave us that... The, the, it was like, when we were together, it was all right. Yeah, like yeah. Everything was just, like, no. You had a, you had a, a um, like, a foundation. Instead. Yeah, like, I had a foundation. Yeah. And it, it just felt good having somebody there. Um, but then, you know, like, all relationships, there's always that little bit of... Well, you're young. Yeah, I'm young. You're I got young. way more left. Yeah, especially now that you're, you're doing your thing, and mm -hmm. you're going to have girls knocking down your door but now do you th okay now that period in your life mm -hmm. did that fuel your music 100% uh, we were we were going through it and then once we broke up I just started writing <laughs> it's spilling out day of and night like three songs a day just like just crying and just like reading letters that we wrote to each other and just and everything songs out of Main song. I wrote a song called Letters. I wrote a song called Pictures. Oh all God. about everything. And I was like, you know what? Screw all this rap stuff. I, I want to be more than that. Um, and I was listening to this guy named Eden. And he still gets me through everything. But I kind of was just like, I'm going to do this. My, my homie I was rapping with, he was like, delete my stuff. I don't like it. I was like, whatever. I deleted all of it. And I started putting out Your own. my own stuff. All produced by me. That was when I started producing. So you were producing. Mm -hmm. You were writing. I was producing. I was writing. I was I mixing? was rapping. And I was mixing. Not good though. <laughs> I'm still learning how to mix. It's hard. That's it's so like the hard. hardest part. It's the part. hardest that part, is the part the of hardest music. Part. Um, so I wrote all that music, and um, after that I kept writing and writing, and then my parents uh, signed me up for this program. Uh, MMVS, uh, Music Career Mastermind Program. Great team of people, and it was like 
uh, I think it was like a whole month of me learning production. That's I was writing with Coley O'Toole from We The Kings. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, great guy. Wow. Um, bunch of vocal coaches. I got my falsetto way better. And then I went away to summer camp. After a month? After a month, everything was amazing. That's amazing. And I still take lessons here and there just to make sure I keep my, like, like I keep that foundation. It's a muscle. Yeah, it's a muscle. You got to really keep working is. it. So then I went away to summer. Uh... Summer camp, I uh, met this girl named Ava, wrote a <laughs> song about her. <laughs> what was the name of the song? Ava, yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, damn, like, I, you know, this new love out there, cool. And then that just crashed and burned, and it was just crazy. It was, it was a rough summer. It was like... Now, have you only, okay, as far as, like, the depression, have yeah. you only dealt with that once in your life, or are you the type of person that's prone to it, do you think? I still deal with depression to this day. You do. Like... I'm all smiles right now, and I'm like, I'm having a good time. Like, this is this is nice. This is what I but love. But it's always something you got to think about. There's always that They bit. say, I mean, you're young, but mm-hmm. they say that the most creative people are the most sensitive to it. Yeah. Like depression and anxiety. Mm-hmm. I feel you on it, too. But I guess that's where you get your songs from. Oh, yeah. No, if I didn't have it, like, as people are think I'm weird because I say this in a lot of my songs and people still look at me like I'm like a monster because of it but like I feel like I just have demons everywhere like I got a demon in my mind I got demons in my room just chilling making me just messed up and like my homie my homie Jay Suave he's my bro and like he's like the only other person I know that kind of goes through it and it's weird I wrote a song named Demon. Yeah, I wrote so a song not, called Demons too. Did you? Because you're not you're not alone in it. Yeah, really it's like not. it's weird because I like it's almost like it just takes over. I was just about to takes literally over. just about to say that it's like something takes over and yeah. you just get to this place and you don't know what to do. Yeah, you don't know what to do, and I feel like the best thing to do is yeah. is write. Say yeah, and I I've confronted it straight up. Like yeah. I've been like. What? I was like, what? What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you want from me? I was like, exactly. I was like, why me? There's all these other people. Why me? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's because you have the talent to take those demons and turn them into yeah. stuff that other people can yeah. relate to. You know? I think that's that's what it is. And the music helped me um, kind of fi- find sanity. Yep. Oh it. my god, yep. Like, as I, I say in my song Demons, I'm like, my demons are creeping up on me around the corners they watch. I see them, but I can't run. Like, I can't run from them. I'm not going to get anywhere. Right. And to be honest, like, if I didn't have them, my music probably wouldn't be where it's at. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just like, like, I always say, any, any of my fans I talk to or anybody who's like, oh, can I have some advice? I'm like, take all the negativity you have as a learning experience and kind of just sit back and enjoy the journey because yep. you're going to learn from every single thing you go through. I was like, take that negative energy, make it positive energy because you're the one who's going to control it. You um, know, they, they, there's a word for it in psychology because I've been to therapists and stuff like that too. Yeah. And um, my psychologist said, he's like, you write songs. He's like, it's called, there's different ways of coping with things. Mm-hmm. Some people lash out in anger. Some people drink. Some people go to drugs and mm-hmm. do stupid things. There's only one good way of coping. It's called sublimation. It's where you take your demons or you take your negative stuff mm-hmm. and you turn it into something good like dancing or music. Yeah. Or, and so you have that ability to take the shit <laughs> and turn it into... It's like... Emo- I call it emotional alchemy. You know what an alchemist is? I've heard of it. They're, okay, so an alchemist is like... People back in the day, they would try to take lead and turn it into gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like emotional alchemy is where you take your shit feelings and you turn them into gold feelings. I love that. Good stuff. I love that. That's, that's, yeah. And that's what you do. And you're talented. So you write, you rap, Mm -hmm. and you sing, too. Yeah. Now, when did you realize you could sing? Did, was that always something that you had? No, I'll be honest. Um, I never thought I was good at singing, and I still to this day, it's like no, you don't. It's like good and bad days, you know. Yeah. Like, 
sometimes I just think I'm not, I ain't shit, like, at all. I just think I'm horrible. But then, like, it was after doing that whole program that I was like, wow, like, I actually have a nice voice. You do actually have a really, and it's unique, too. Thank you. You're welcome. It's like, it was when I found out I can mix them both, I was, like, really, like, okay. The world is. I was like, yeah. Is yours. It's all coming together. It's dope. You now. I I don't think I've heard. Well, I have heard you rap, mm-hmm. but I don't think I've heard a so, a song of you rapping yet. Not yet. Not yet. But on your album, you have a mix of everything. Uh, it's a mix of everything, and my album is on that whole story of found my first love, had depression. It's called Angels and Heartbreakers. That's what it's called. Yeah, it's coming out this summer. You just took the words out of my mouth. I was just gonna ask you what it's called. Yeah, Angels and Heartbreakers. And there's ten songs. Ten songs, for, and it's from where it started to where I'm at right now. So it's oh my god, I feel like we have so much in common. It's I wrote crazy. I, I wrote an album, and I wanted to take through like is it kind of like the journey through your yeah. depression? Yeah, whole journey through it. That's awesome. And then it's how me at the end I'm just like. Can't do nothing about it. Here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're living to tell the story. And yeah. that's the important part. That's the important part. That's dope. Now, who would you say, anybody, and it could be more than one person, I guess. All right, good. <laughs> I know this is like, this is been... Is your biggest, it's a cliche question, but who is your biggest inspiration? inspiration? Um, Where do you get it from? Uh, we're talking like, some famous people off the top of my head, I would say, Jeezy, Eden, um, Logic. I love his wordplay. Oh, I love amazing. how fast he raps. Amazing. Uh, this guy named Token. Token is He's dope. He's so. Token is dope. M- blows Have my mind. Have you ever mind. heard of um, Team Backpack? Yeah. We, we. Yeah. Yeah, we know a bunch of people. Yeah, I uh, did. I sent in a video submission. Oh, you did. For one dope. Of the things. And it was, it was fun. It yeah, was Team fun. Backpack is where it's at. Um, so you like all that wordplay stuff? Yeah, but, like, I gotta say right now, somebody who's really just been, like, inspiring me. Um, I met my boy Jay Suave, like, last month. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, we're both, like, the same people. Like, we see somebody and we're, like, you know, we've been hurt by so many people. It's kind of like we just, like, sit back and observe, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but there was one night he slept over and we talked for like five hours straight. Like we talked all through the night and I was like, damn, like, damn. And then we started like, we started like kind of collaborating on music a little bit. And it's so awesome when you see people you're working with have that potential Yeah. and you're like, I can go places and they can go places and like. This Take this each other. yeah this is like we got each other. How and old is he? He's a uh, eighteen. Oh okay, so he's a little older. Yeah, he uh, he's like out of high school and everything. So how'd you meet him? For my friend, um, like I don't I don't mess with anybody, but my so friend you was stay, like you stick to yourself. I stick to myself. I'm okay. so like which is secluded. Like, that's crazy for a sixteen year old to say. I hate parties. Do you really? Like. Like, I'll go to a party and I'll be like, all right, this is fun. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm like, I could be home right now making music. That is awesome. I'm like, that most of these hope. kids don't even like me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I like myself somewhat. I got very few people that mess with me too. And I got my circle small. That's good. You got to keep Yeah, there's a g Easy line. It's like, circle small, just the perfect few. Only of us, that's the perfect crew. What's that's the second one? one? Only what? Um... Circle small, just a certain few. Um, it's just the perfect few. Oh, so got it's like got perfect it. crew. Got it, got it. Um, and anyway, my oh, friend was yeah. like, yeah, my friend was like, oh, uh, I'm going to bring my homie over. Well, no, he was uh, he was working with this kid. He kept telling me how he was working with this kid because we were in our rooms. And I went to his house and he showed me one of the songs. And I was like, who is this kid? <laughs> and he was like, he's fire. And I, he was like, you know, he might not mess with you, though, because, like, a lot of kids don't mess with me. I was like, whatever. So my friend... We're going to have to get back to that. I'm going to have to ask you why that right. is. But keep going. Um, My friend was like... My friend had to come over. He had to pick up his charger. Yeah. And I walk out, and the kid was driving the car. And I was like, what's up, man? What's your name? He was like, 
I don't even see a swab. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> was like, you don't want that track? I was like, yo, I mess with your stuff. Keep the good work. And he was like, thanks, man. And then he like, my, he told me. He was like, I asked Mike. And he was like, what's that kid's name? And then my friend Mike was like, that's Jake. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and it was kind of just like, like he's just been inspiring me a lot recently. Like we've been just making song after song after song. Is it like his friendship type of thing too? Like also the support he's given you? Yeah, it's just like. And he's dope. It's a bond. Like yeah. I've learned more about him than I've learned from some of my friends. Like that aren't even my friends anymore in years. Now okay. Now getting back to you said not a lot of people mess with you. Yeah. Why? Um, What's the? Cause I I'm gonna say, I've been around you for what an hour now, hour and a half. Yeah. You're a dope dude. Thank you. You are. Thank you. You got a good head on your shoulders. You're um very mature. It, it, you know, for a sixteen year old, you know what you you have a vision. Mm-hmm. So why why I don't I don't get it. To be honest, I I never understood it. Um, you still don't. I still don't understand how people could have that much hate in their heart to just, like, go out of their way to try hurting somebody as much as they can. Yeah. So, basically, it all started... Oh, there's a story? Yeah, like, I yes. talk about it in some, like, middle school when the judgment starts where you fall in love and then they break your heart. Mm-hmm. Like, I hit middle school, and everybody was like, oh, we, we big dogs now. Like, everybody thought they were the <laughs> shit. Everybody was like, I'm growing up. Oh, my God. Um, if they only knew. Yeah, and I was just if like... If you only knew. I hit the point where I was just like, whatever. I was like, I'm middle school. What's gonna happen? I'm almost. I was, I was. All I looked forward to in middle school was get me into high school, and then get me out of high school. Um, so since I danced and I was really big on dancing, um, and I sang, the girls loved me. <laughs> they they were like they were really like everybody talked to me. And I was like, that was when I first was like, I, I started having my glow up. I started getting like, I used to be ugly. But like, <laughs> I, I I don't care if it sounds cocky. I think I'm good looking now. You so are. You're good kid. looking kid. Thank you. You are. You got the look. So anyway, I was just like, what's up, ladies? I was I was in that whole rap phase. I was like, I'm the shit. I was like, yeah. Um, so it's mainly guys that don't like you. Because girls, you got it on. Okay. All right. And Continue. The, the guys hated me. Because a lot of the girls they liked were talking to me and being like, Oh, we love that kid and I was just like, What's up? What up then? I was like, We'll hang out. Yeah, exactly. Just, <laughs> um But then it got to the point where I was like I turned I just turned to like an asshole and I was just like talking to one girl and then just being like, Hey, the other one and I was just like Joke. I was I was honestly just like, Yo, there's enough of Jake to go around like, <laughs> You did what any typical yeah. middle school kid who's got a Yeah, lot of I got girls. my hormones bubbling. I'm just like, yo, <laughs> puberty, what's up? Your hormones are about to pop. Yeah, I'm just going crazy. <laughs> um, so then something else was like, wow, it's kind of a dick. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, and then the jocks hated me, like all the popular kids. And everybody would be like, oh, he's popular because everybody knew me. But I was just known. I wasn't popular. Yeah. I was just somebody who was like, oh, yeah, you know that kid. Yeah, he, um, he does music. He does he dances. Exactly. Yeah. So all the guys are like, oh, this kid dances, he sings. And it got to the point where those whole rumors like, yo, he's gay. And I was like, Oh my god. It turned into him and Mike are we definitely going. together. Like it turned into that. Cause I, I, I you know, I liked my hair, like I was I was just I didn't shave my head. I'm sorry. I, I liked having a nice head of hair. <laughs> so everybody turned into Oh, he's he's dating Mike. He's dating Mike. And me and Mike were like yeah, what? <laughs> like, I didn't even know what gay was. Like, I'm so, like, really? Oh, I was just like, what? So I go home, like, mom, what is gay? And she was like, <laughs> it's when you're happy. So I walk in the school, I was like, yo, I'm happy. What's up then? That's I was right. like, whatever. <laughs> I was like, I definitely ain't dating Mike though. Um, so it's crazy. Um, you know, it was, it was rough. <laughs> it's when you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> I am happy. What do you mean? I was like, whatever. I was like, just, just chill. Um, and then, yeah. So, like, it all happened. And it was all just going up. And then I was like, you know what? I went all. I said, I was like, F all of you. Don't mm. talk to me. I don't want none of y'all. Everybody was like, wow, this kid's a little dick. And I was like, I don't care. Screw all of you. Yeah. Like, because I literally, the amount of people I trust, I I can probably count it on one hand. Like, Well, 
you got you, you definitely have good parents. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah, you, growing up was rough. You, it was. Yeah, my mom was in and out of the hospital. My dad's always working. In and out of the hospital for what? I was just always sick. Oh no. Like it was sucked. Like she missed Christmas once and like I would just go to the hospital but like I, I couldn't even look at her. Like it was just sad. And it still tears me apart to this day. Like she's better now. But like I'll go to the hospital with her and the doctors will say the same thing they say every time and I'm just like, Can you can do you something? shut up? Can you actually do something? <laughs> I'm just like what is wrong with you guys? I'm like, that's my mom right there. If you do something stupid, I'll end you. Like, it got to that point. So you're protective of your family. Yeah, really protective of my family. And they support everything that you do. Yeah, it took a while to get them to support the music. But mm-hmm. once that song Ava blew up, they were like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right. You might, we you may might, be on to something. We may be on to something. Because <laughs> I always tell my family, I'm like, I'm destined for greatness. I'm like, and like, yeah, I would love that my family support, but. With or without you guys, I'm going to make myself it. something. That's what's going to push you above everybody else, mm-hmm. too, is that mentality. And also, again, for a 16-year-old, you got some work ethic. Like, you're, oh, yeah. you're doing your thing. Yeah. You really are. Yeah. You're doing the videos, you're performing, mm-hmm. you're recording every day. Right? Yeah, I don't want to just be known as, like, the rapper. You're like, you know, I want to be, like, that artist. Like, I don't want people to be like, yo, like... I want to be ranked next to, like, the Renaissance, man. I want to be, like, Leonardo da Vinci, like, style. <laughs> I want people to be like, yo, his word is crazy, because I'm not just doing music. Like, uh, I'm doing my whole company. I'm starting a company. I'm kind of like... Oh, you are? Yeah, like, I'm a freelancer. So, yeah. like, I'm going to be starting my own clothing brand. I'm going to be starting my own record label. Like, I want to pull a Kanye West. I want to I wanna do it. Did Now, we were talking... Before and you said you pay attention to Gary V. Mm-hmm. Is Gary that where you v. get that from? Type Somewhat. Of I would say I get it mostly from Tyler the Creator. Oh wow! Tyler really? the Creator is one of my biggest inspirations. That man took his friends and his friend group to said we're gonna have fun and the world watched. Yeah. And he took hold and he built an empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He turned. Something that he he just drew a donut in class and turned that into one of the most known logos in the world that's next to us. They became one of the biggest streetwear clothing. Like, they just blew up. And I was like, yo, like, I want to have my own clothing. I want to make my own music that's just popping. Like, and my biggest thing is, yeah, I want to do everything. I want to be in every single piece of the water, pond, anywhere. I want to be everywhere. (laughs) And, like, I, I don't want, I just, I want people to know me. Like yeah. everybody wants to be something. Everybody yeah. wants to be a somebody. Um, but I want people to look at me and be like, "Yeah, he has what he wants." Like I want an empire. I don't care about the music industry. I'll go breaking through it or around it. I'll build my own empire out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Build your own record label. Yeah, build my own record <laughs> if label. If you really wanted to. Yeah. Now, no what is your end game is that it like do you want to own an island somewhere or <laughs> that'd be nice kicking back <laughs> with some homies drinking champagne uh no um is it about the money or is it more about no it's about the art it is about it's the art. it's about change like as i said to you before we start doing this the world doesn't have any more gandhis the world doesn't have any more like martin luther king that. juniors anything and i i i kind of just I want to be able to affect everybody. I want the world to be a better place. And right now, the way the world is looking is horrible. Like, um, yeah, I was true. telling you how I wrote a speech that it's never just going to go anywhere. Um, but I was just like... You just wrote a speech for you? I wrote a speech for myself. That's amazing. Okay, talk about that. Um, I basically was like... It's, I, I wrote it in May. I was like, it's May, and I feel like a candle barely giving off enough light to... Shine the the smallest room, and I was like, and even if I had a hundred candles, meaning a hundred people, it still wouldn't shine. Cause shit is so shit. Yeah, I was like, we live on a planet called Earth, and we treat it so horribly that it's like if you had a home and you never took care of it. Yeah. And I was like, like this is so big to me. What I'm about to say. In the United States. I do not want to watch the news anymore and see breaking news there was a shooting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every day we're having shootings. And it's ridiculous. Because I look at all these other countries and look at their statistics. And they'll have, like, 
like we've had it was some number like I'm just spinning off the top of my head but it was like I think it was like not it was like 290 or above that shooting this since, year two, alone? since 2009 oh, it was like snap. it was crazy and I was just like what and then I looked at all the other stuff and like it was like UK had two I was like, whoa. Yeah, we're in the triple digits in there. We're people. we're in the triple digits and they just at one. And yeah. I was like, I always hate arguing about politics with everybody because no matter how much anybody says they're open to something to talk about it, they're they not. are always biased. Yeah, if you have your view on if things. If you have your view, it's your view. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah. People don't know how to, that, and I think that's the big problem too is people don't know how to communicate. Listen. And, yeah, and listen and, and talk. Yeah. Like, like human beings. Like, I always said, like, I wish I lived in the 50s. <laughs> I wish I lived in the 50s. Because um, I've, I've even seen it with my parents. Like, it was like, like, my mom and my dad were telling me, like, before, like, the phones were a thing. Like, before we had cell phones. Cell phones. We, we could walk with a computer in our hand. Like, it was like, my dad would drive to work, be rose on her car. And I was like, yo, my dad was hella romantic. Um, I just, like... But the phone now, yeah. it's like... We send a rose emoji. You like, don't got to walk up to a girl and say, hey, like, can I take you on a date? <laughs> like, chivalry is so dead. Like, I want chivalry back. Like, I want people to keep so that alive. So you want, basically, it sounds like, mm-hmm. human connection. Like, human connection. To connect. Peace. Like, I just want people to be able to communicate. And I don't, I don't want to worry about, yo, what, what people are after me now. I don't want people judging me as a person because of what my government is making as decisions. Yeah. Because I should tell people. I was like, I saw on Snapchat, it was this whole thing about like, our government dissed Canada or some shit. And everybody was like, it was like, what are your sides of the story? And Canada was like, we were never friends with the U.S. Like, the U.S. sucks. Their people suck. And I was like, first <laughs> off, I'm not even old enough to vote. I was like, I have no power and doing anything. And that's why we have all these people, like the people in Parkland. Mm. Like all those people, like who like young push. Young kids. Yeah, young kids. And people say, oh, this generation's so, no, they're so bad. No. We're the future. Yeah. No matter what generation, they're always the future. And it's whether we take hold of what we want or we just let it all go to disaster. I have faith in the future coming up. Like your, your yeah. generation because... My generation pay, didn't even pay attention. Like, I didn't start paying attention to all this shit until Donald Trump was running for president. Mm. And you guys are, like, so vocal and so um, exposed to all of it yeah. that you can, like... I've never heard a 16-year-old in my day... I mean, I'm only 28, mm-hmm. 29, but I've never heard a 16-year-old sit and be like, I don't like the way shit is going in the world. I want, I want to, make to a change. change. Gandhi says, "Be the change you want to see in the world." That's and I'm it. like, "That's honestly." How am I going to do that? And I think through music, I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah. Do you want to like speak about it in your music? Is that something you want to do, or do yeah. you want to also, when you get to a certain level, give back or create a foundation or something? Definitely like want to create a foundation. I definitely want to go to a bunch of like like marches and meetings and like just like talk and just talk to people and hopefully touch somebody because i feel like no no government leader is like talking like abraham lincoln did (laughs) like no like one of my favorite speeches to watch my history teacher showed me it and like he's such a great guy one of my biggest like role models at the moment um he showed me robert f kennedy um, John F. Kennedy's brother, he showed me him in the ghetto announcing to all the black people in the community that Martin Luther King was murdered. Oh my god. And the god. police told Robert F. Kennedy, we can't protect you if you go there. Like, you know that's bad. And he basically, like, talked to them, and his words were just so, like, moving. Moving. Like, he was like, I understand you guys could be filled with hatred and want revenge. And he was like, and I can say that I feel the same. And we know that this was done by a white man, but I can also say my brother got shot by a white man and I still have that hatred and revenge. But the biggest thing that stuck out to me was he said, we could be a country 
that goes into darkness and goes the wrong way. Yeah. Or we could be the country that goes, no, we're going to make a difference and goes in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It takes one person to change the course of history. Yeah. And we've seen that. <laughs> we've seen that. Yeah, Hitler, he changed the course of history. Yeah. Albert Einstein, he changed the course of history with one invention. Like, it's like... So you're into all of that. You're I love into... history. History is the only subject I like. I hate science. I hate math. Really? I can't do anything else but history. And and obviously writing. But and English. writing. English is, English is good. But history you love. Why? Why do you love history? If people don't look at past events... Can't see with the future. You don't know what you're going to do in the future. Don't let history repeat itself. Yeah. Don't let... Bad history repeat itself. Now, what and I see that happening. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, I, I see, like, really bad. I hope something happens in the next year mm. or so. Me too. That changes, the, like you said, changes the course of mm -hmm. things. Because I feel like on the way we're headed, the not road we're good. on, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be too good. No, not at all. Now, oh. what you said you want to create eventually a foundation when you get to a certain point. Yeah. Um... What would your cause be? Do you know? Have you thought about it? Yeah. Um, that would kind of just be like putting events together that bring everybody together. And it's kind of just like a, like we stand together. Like everybody's together. That's awesome. And it's like kind of just against negativity. And through that, it's like we take activities that involve like, like I've done beach cleanups with my mom and sister with a bunch of people. That's and awesome. Like, like clean up beaches, clean up bad stuff raise money to make sure that not only are these rich communities getting nice roads and nice sidewalks and good stuff like no like everybody should have that everybody should have health care everybody should be like because i i don't want to be i don't want to be paying for health care that that should be free i'm just <laughs> i think everybody deserves to you, have dude. health <laughs> everybody deserves to have health yeah and and an opportunity to Exactly. Get the care that they need. And who are you to say to somebody, well, you didn't pay enough money, so you don't deserve this beautiful thing. Called life. Yeah, you don't, you don't deserve it. No. It's like, no. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm with you, dude. Honestly, you create... Because that's, that's what, this, what the world needs. It's named after a song that I wrote called What the World Needs. Mm. And... Um, it's basically the same thing, like just spreading positivity and having people come together mm -hmm. of all walks of life and just make a true change in the world. Like we need more people like you, especially young people mm -hmm. who are going to step up and be like, no, I don't like the way things are going. I want to, I want to change. And I think the beautiful thing is like we can, as artists, make the world positive through all our negativity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, someone I really think that I, I've been connecting to more recently is uh, XXX Tentacion. Um, because I make songs that are just so depressing and dark. And my mom, she's like, you need to make some more happy songs. So I'm just <laughs> like, I can't write a happy song if I feel like crap. Um, but then I have other songs where I'm just like, yo, I'm trying to turn up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want people to see my um, like my wisdom, my creativity. Like I want people to see that and be inspired by it. Yeah, and most importantly, um, this person named Shiloh posted this. They've been off the internet for like two years now, but they posted. I don't want to be a look. I want to be a feeling. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. I, I want to be a feeling. I don't care about how I look. Like, if, like, I'll shave half my head for all I care. Like, I don't want people to be like, wow, I love you. You're so hot. No, I want people to say, I love you. You literally got me through Yes. all this. I, I want to be a feeling that makes people be like, wow. Like, I want people, to, their, their hair to stand up, goosebumps, <laughs> just feel it in their heart and just be yeah. like, you want to know. That's right. And that's the thing, too. Like, I have, I have a. a pretty good following mm -hmm. um, overseas and stuff like that. And I get messages all the time of people, you're cute, you're this, you're yeah. that. But the best compliment I'll ever receive is when somebody says, 
either if it's about even if it's not about my music like mm-hmm. screw that if they just come and they're like I see you and who you are as a human being mm-hmm. and you personally have inspired me because you're just humble you're a good person and I see your heart mm-hmm. that is that the, is the best yeah that is the best, best. like yeah. I had I had this one girl she hit me up and she was like Listen, I've been going through the worst time recently. And she was like, and I just want to say, like, your songs have helped me so much. And I was just like, wow. Like. To know that you have that ability. Yeah, I was like, I affected somebody in that way. And isn't it crazy how, like, going back to when you were depressed, you have those people that that affected you. Yeah, I had those people who helped me. And I was like. I can be like that. Yeah. Like and that's what you want to do. That's your end goal. Yeah. So it's nothing to do about money. No. Cars. You got a good head on your shoulders. Thank you. Sixteen years old saying this stuff. And I think it's important to say like I'll never just be in one genre. Yeah. Like I I just don't see that, and I don't I don't want to be like, yo like look at this dude like, he he's the hottest rapper hottest pop singer right now or. His R and B is crazy. No, like I wanna just be like, did you hear that song he just did where he was rapping, like just letting it all out? No, but I did see that song of him singing his heart out and just <laughs> like I just did a performance in Connecticut and I was performing the last song on my album. Um, I wasn't supposed to perform it. I was supposed to perform my song Maryland. That's out, but I was like, no, like this needs to be shared. I walked out and I was just like, the song's called Stuck. And I started singing it, and I hit, like, kind of like the hook, and I just broke down, and I started crying on stage, and everybody was just like, like, I had, I had so many people walk up to me after. I had this lady, um, wife of Mike Mangini, who's very well known, yeah. Grammys won all the time, and she walked up, and she was like, you're the reason I'm wearing sunglasses right now. She was like, you made me cry. I, 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 like, I felt so bad that I was making people like cry. I was like, I'm so sorry, but, like, <laughs> but they're I connecting cried. connecting with you. I was like, I cried, and I did not want that to happen. I'm like, I'm sorry. And they were like, no, no. Like, she said something that like, has literally affected me so much. She, she was like, I see that you have the ability to break down walls that nobody wants to go break down and address problems that nobody wants to break down. And I'm like... I I was like, wow. Yeah. She she she's she sees what I'm trying to do, mm-hmm. and I think that we're stuck in this whole new like rap thing right now. This whole new like I'm gonna troll everybody. Preach. Preach. Uh, everybody's just like y'all like make this like cool like I'll totally turn up to that at the club if I'm dancing because I I'll but do. But what it. is it doing? What is it doing for somebody else? Yeah, exactly. Because nobody's like, damn. That changed me. Yeah, like. <laughs> That's amazing, though, too. I feel like people are... We we don't give people as much credit as we should. Mm-hmm. And they're more intuitive and more... They, they can sense the bullshit more than we think. Mm-hmm. So if you come from a place of turn up, turn up, turn up, and that's all you're talking about. It's all. Like, there's no... It's yeah. all surface. You may get popping. Mm-hmm. And it'll happen, but you won't have any longevity in the game. Yeah, no longevity. Because people see that. People want to be able to relate and connect. Yeah. And see you emotionally naked on stage Mm -hmm. crying. That's awesome. That had to have been a beautiful moment for you. Yeah. Now, has that... When was that? It was last weekend. Oh, my God. So, (laughs) that recent... It was, like, last weekend. And what about that song did it for you? Um, I wrote that song last month, probably in, like, one of the darkest mindsets I've ever been in. And it was kind of just, like, me just saying. It's basically uh, my message to, like, a higher power, because I'm very... I don't know what I I don't know what I believe in. I feel you. Um, and it was kind of like that. My whole <laughs> message to that, and kind of just me like looking at like love and looking at connection, and I was just like, 
Like, my two of my favorite lines are like, the fuck is a feeling when there is no meaning? The fuck is relationships when there's just cheating? Mm. Like, I saying that, and I just, poof, like, it Lost went it. out. And I'm like, I talked about, like, like, cause I literally, like, I lost all faith. I was a Catholic kid. I grew up in the Catholic Church. Same. Made my confirmation. Same. And they said something that's a confirmation that I d- didn't sit with me right. And I was like, no. What'd they say? It was like, it was along the lines of, like, it was like, if you ever go away from the Catholic Church. You're going to burn in burn in hell. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I was like, whoa. I was like. I'm about to, I'm about to do this. I was like, <laughs> I'm about to sign my life away. So I did it, and I was just like, after that, I was like, all right, no, you no. Don't, in my, you don't know at that age. Yeah, yeah, and I can say in my years of on like spiritual, because mm-hmm. I'm not religious either. I don't believe yeah. in organized religion. Me neither. The Bible to me has some weird things in it. Yeah. I don't see the sky opening up anymore. (laughs) But I do believe in, like you said, love and that energy. Yeah. That there is a higher power out there. Mm Mm-hmm. But um, it's okay to be spiritual Mm -hmm. and not religious. Yeah. And I think that you're, you're beyond your time. Like, again, talking to you for, I know you for two hours now yeah. about, you are way beyond your time. Like, I feel like listening to you, I'm listening to myself. So you're going to... It's nice. Yeah, it is nice. And I don't understand, just for the record, I don't understand why nobody fucks with this kid. Like, why Why you can't... That's probably why, because people it's see... they're afraid. Yeah, your potential, because you really mm-hmm. have that. And... um. Now, as far as spirituality goes, you believe in you believe in God. You believe that there's something out there. You don't know. I don't know. I believe that there's something, cause it's just. But no matter what way I go, of like, all right, this, 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 it's like. N- there's no don't make sense. No matter where I go, I always find a different like loophole that's just like. Okay. But don't get me wrong. Like I respect all religions. Like I respect all you guys. Like. As long as you have something that you believe in that's helping you get through something, awesome. Yep. Stick to it. Yep. We don't got to always be on the same page. No. Nope. One thing we're all connected by is love. And as long as we keep connecting, that'll be good. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. And you're brave for even saying that. Mm-hmm. Like, for admitting that you're 16 and you're still trying to figure shit out. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. No. I'm far from it. No. And most 16-year-olds are like, I have all the answers. I know everything yeah. there is to know. But you can mm-hmm. admit that you're young. I can admit myself. A lot of us are just clueless. But we're, <laughs> the thing is, like, we're afraid of feeling like the like the, the one out. We don't want to be looked at like the elephant in the room. We just yeah. want to be, like, accepted. Because, like, we're at that point where it's like, all right, like, I'm kind of becoming a grown-up. And, like, I see all these kids freaking out right now in my school. Like, oh, what college am I going to go to? What do I want to do with my life? And I'm just like, I've known what I wanted to do with my life since eighth grade. I'm like, this is crazy. And that's, again, like, there are people my age who don't know what the hell they want. Exactly. And just because of that, they settle. And it's sad. And I think it's mostly because people are so unaware and they go to all the parties and it's just like they have all these distractions. Distractions. Yeah. Uh, addictions. Yep. Like. <laughs> That's why I got like, I've been writing. And because it started the same for me, like I went through a very bad depression when I was like thirteen. Mm. I was bullied in school really bad. And I wanted to kill myself, and I was just in a bad place, and I started writing poetry. Mm-hmm. And when I was 18, that's when I started really recording and getting into it. And um, I just remember thinking at that point, like, this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. This is why this this had to happen. The depression, the bullying had to happen. Yeah, it's it's nice when you're like, wow, like, I was put here to do this. Yeah. 
And like people could say, oh, nah, nah. Like I've had people be like, oh, you ain't gonna be shit. And I've just been like, people really feel Watch that. me. Yeah. Like I literally like I made literally like a competition with them where I'm like, listen, it's either you mess with me or you don't. It's not going to matter. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to make a difference. And if you just want to sit behind a desk and hate behind your computer screen, do it. Yeah. Yep. Like, oh, Jay Zach, this rapper out of uh, New Hampshire, he said, he said, go and hate from your computer screen instead of actually fucking doing things. Yep. And that's the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. The people who project that hate the most are the ones who hate themselves the most. Yeah, they hate themselves the most. Yeah. So they just want to make themselves feel better. And I think it's when anybody, if you're going through, like, getting bullied or going through, like, just feeling, like, upset, like, the second you notice that those bullies are probably feeling way worse than you and probably have some real internal, external conflict, Preach. you'll be good. Yep. And you just got to find your people, and that may be one person. It does not matter. Yeah. Find your people. Because there's always, like... At the end of the day, it's you. Make sure you're so, like you're happy. Like yes, I love my family and I love the whole family first thing, but I gotta put myself right ahead of everything. Damn, dude, you're so like. It's you, weird. I'm you, sixteen. You're so mature. Yeah. Like you're so mature yeah. to even be saying that because it's the truth. You know, you, sometimes you just need that one person to get you through that shit. Mm-hmm. And. You have to love you first and foremost. And it's not even selfish. Mm -hmm. the, the most selfless thing you can do is loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't love yourself and fill yourself up, you can't give it to You can't give it to anybody mm -hmm. else. Because mm -hmm. you're just like, uh, being in a relation and being like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I wish I looked better. Like... I, I used to be like that. I was like, yo, I need to go Same. to the gym. I need to work out. Now I'm at the point where I'm like, you either like me for who I am or get out. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, I, I want that conflict in the relationship. I want us to be able to figure it out because the more problems we go through, the more stronger we're going to be together. Yeah. Because you cannot be in a relationship with somebody and never fight and just be like, oh, every, no. everything's good. It's like a muscle. It's, yeah, you have to work it out. Yeah, you got to You have to get it through it. Yeah. Crazy. When we live in a society too where everybody's just quitting at the drop of a hat. Like mm -hmm. relationships. They're quitting their relationships, but not quitting their nine to five shit jobs to yeah. go pursue their dreams. They're just like, yo, this job sucks, but like, nah. People are walking around like fucking zombies. We are living yeah. in a zombie apocalypse. We're living in a zombie apocalypse. We are. They're, walk we're, they're walking around with their phones and, just, and then oh, waking sorry, up in the morning on autopilot, going yeah. to their jobs that they hate, not knowing. Yeah, nobody deserves to go to a job that they hate. No. Nobody. No, it's got to take a lot of energy out of you to do that. And you definitely, you definitely should not feel down if your job's not as good as somebody else's because every single job matters to the world. I don't care if you making mulch and you making <laughs> fertilizer out of some cow poop or something. <laughs> like, that job matters. Because without it, what are the gardeners doing? And then those people who are gardeners, the homeowners who don't think their house looks good, and then the people who build the house. It all goes up. Every job matters. And I, one of my biggest things is if I've looked over history, social classes are dumb. Stupid. Everybody deserves to be equal, but we live in a world where we know that's impossible. Yeah. But I don't care if it's impossible. We need to try our hardest to make sure that. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think it is impossible. I don't. I, I. I think what we do is we look at people and what they make for a living, mm -hmm. and we right away judge based off of oh you make a hundred grand a year okay you're up here. Oh, you make twenty grand a year. You're down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're on food stamps. You're down here. Like we put people in those exactly boxes. Everybody can make different amounts of money, but if we just change our mind state and realize the money doesn't matter, like yeah. it doesn't matter what you make, where you live, we're all human beings. Yeah, we, we all gotta treat each other that way. I, I'm def. I'm gonna add this. 
So, my cousin Steven. Mm-hmm. I've literally, like, in school when they'd be like, oh. Hi, Steven. What's poppin', Steven? <laughs> Love you, bro. Like, ever since I was little, it'd be like, oh, right, 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 your role model. I would write him every time. It was crazy. Um, and he always, he always is trying to tell me, like, everything's going to be okay. There's something out there. Like, you're going to be good. And I'm just like, thank you. Um, but he broke something down to me that he figured out this year. He's been on the earth for over 20 years. You know, like, he's, he's my big cousin. And I love him. Um, but he, he was like, listen, because... As we said, the Bible, we're a little iffy about it. He goes, he goes, the Bible, a lot of people, I think, are reading it wrong. And that's all opinion. That's opinion. Yeah, but, I agree. Yeah. Like, everybody can read it a different way, and it's going to take it the yeah. separate way. But he said, this is important to people looking at other people and judging. He said, you have the Ten Commandments, and, like, there's, like, oh, thou shalt not bear. Like, you can't, like... Go to somebody else. You can't kill. You can't steal somebody's wife. You can't... Think you know, about stealing can't, yeah. their wife, I think. Something like that. You yeah, so it. here's the thing. So it's like... If you look at somebody and you look at their car... Like, thou shalt not steal. You look at somebody's car and you go, Damn, I want that. You're stealing that car. You're stealing that in your mind. In your mind, yeah. Because you want it and you don't think what you have is good enough. Yeah. When that doesn't matter. They're all getting you to the same place. You have, oh, you can't, you can't take nobody's wife. The second you look at a girl with a guy or a guy with a girl and go, you know, like, say, say I'm on post, you know, I'm like, damn, that girl got a fat ass. Like, <laughs> the second I'm like, damn, and I see her with a guy and I'm like, damn, I wish I had that. I'm stealing her from him. I'm committing adultery. Yeah. Because they're trying to work something. They're trying to build something. When I could be building something with somebody who actually needs me. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has that one person. Mm-hmm. It's whether we find them, whether we walk past them and mess that up. Like, we're always going to find it. Yeah. We find love in the weirdest things. I find love in music. That ain't a person, but I love it. That's your girlfriend, your first girlfriend. Exactly. That's my first love. That's my first love. Besides my mom. I love my <laughs> Aww. mom. Aww. Hi, mom. We go through some shit, though, but I love you. That's all right. It's family. Yeah, it's family. family everybody, everybody goes through it. And you're right, though. You're right. Yeah. And and we all have to find what we love. And just, like Gary Vee says, just double down and triple down mm-hmm. and just keep going with it. Yeah. You have yeah. a passion. You run right through that. You yeah. just take it with you. Even if you love knitting. Like Post, yep. post knit. Malone. You Go know, knit. You know Post Malone? Post Malone. Obviously. I love him. He's awesome. Um, he knits. He says, like, he's gotten gotten into it. I watched an interview. And, like, dude, knit and, like, sell your <laughs> sell your shit. Sell your crochets and yeah. everything. Like, yeah, sell if it. If you love something, do it. Yeah. Like, that doesn't matter to me as long as you're happy. Yeah. Awesome. Think about it. You need We need doctors in the world, right? Mm-hmm. There are people out there who love... Doing surgery, cutting people open. I can never. I, I can don't never look do at it either. It. I don't nope. look at it. There are people who are nurses out there, and some nurses have to clean up doo doo out mm-hmm. of people's assholes. Mm-hmm. But they love doing it. You exactly. Know I mean? They like, love helping. Yeah. So. I was watching an interview yesterday. This is important. Um, they said one supportive adult can help a kid more than a doctor could. Yeah. Because that, that, that one sport of adults, you're going to put them on the path to greatness or the path to failure. I think you have a dope support system. And honestly, when I was your age, I wish I had that. Yeah, I feel bad for a lot of people who don't. Yeah. It's like everybody deserves it. Yeah. And you got a good head on your shoulders. You know what you want. You're going to get it. You're going to not stop until you get it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, no, I'm not, I ain't stopping. I got my full... I'm, I'm in drive, brick on the gas pedal. I'm just going. And you said it before, even if you got to sleep on somebody's couch. Yeah. If you got I'll sleep on a floor. I'll, I will I won't eat for a week. Like, I will struggle as much as I have to. This kid's going to... He's going to be something. This kid. Oh, I'm going to be a somebody. <laughs> oh, somebody. Now, what is... This is what I ask everybody. Kind of. 
Uh-huh. What is, before we close, one last thing that you want somebody to know or a piece of wisdom, favorite um, quote, something like that? Um, Leave them being like, holy shit, I gotta go check out his music because I love him. Yeah. Um... No, like no matter what, like no matter what's coming at you, all the negativity, all the bullshit, like just know, like there's there's better out there. Like you're gonna get through it, and you're gonna push, cause you gotta you gotta go through the dirt to get to the gold. Like you have to go through complete the worst conditions of emotions and everything, and. Once you get through that, looking back, you're going to be proud. It's like looking at scars, looking at... Slaying bruises. a dragon. It's like slaying a dragon, and you got that big cut on your arm from You look back, and then you go, I did that. I've been through this. <laughs> yep. That's what that's what it is. So go through life like that. And I got a show July 6th. Um, it's at Revolution in Amityville. Amityville. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, $15 at the door. And it's gonna be a movie. I'm performing and a 25 minutes set with some other cool artists. Check out the album. Check out the album this summer. It's coming out. Angels and Heartbreakers. When? Do you have a date? No, I'm thinking late July. Alright, alright. Late, Jul- late July, yeah. Is it finished? Mixing and mastering process right now. Got it. I'm recording right. the last song, the 19th, and then we're just mixing and mastering. That's it? Yeah. So late July, stay tuned for it. It's coming. Mm-hmm. And my singles, Marilyn and Daddy's Girl, are on it. So. And if you don't love him now, you will when he's huge. So you, you might as well just people. love him now. Right? Yeah. Right. Peace, love, and don't positivity. Do. That's been my motto for a long time. Yeah. Stay real. This is how I end it. Stay woke. Stay woke. <laughs> <laughs> stay real. Stay smiling. Stay wonderful, everybody. Peace out. Peace out.